My recent adventure in Canada took me 600 miles north of Winnipeg, Manitoba, to the remote town of Churchill, which has a population of just about 600 people. Tourists visit here year-round to experience natural wonders like the Northern Lights and beluga whale migration. However, in the winter, polar bears migrate directly through this town on their way north to the Hudson Bay. This is one of the only places on Earth where humans can observe these magnificent animals up close, making it the polar bear capital of the world, and a place I just had to visit. Joined by my friends Kevin Sharkey and Scott Duncan, I was eager to learn more about polar bears and discover how global warming is affecting this threatened species. My informative journey began on a helicopter tour over Cape Churchill. Now we're traveling south with our pilot, Andrew. We'll go on the coast here. We need the ice to freeze here. It's late this year. Normally there would be a line not far, but 200 feet offshore. The formation of Arctic sea ice is critical for polar bears. It is on this ice that they spend the winter hunting for ringed seals, the staple of a polar bear's diet. Ideally, the bears will spend eight months feasting out on the ice to build up fat stores in order to survive on land during the warmer months. So we just had a most incredible flight and we saw many polar bears all looking for frozen ice. And I hope that it does get colder than it is. It's still not frigid here and the water is not freezing. And that's the plight of the polar bear. Over the past 10 to 15 years, scientists have seen the polar bear population of Churchill decline by over 20%. Right now we're in Wapusk National Park. It is a preserve for the wildlife. And we're going to get up close and personal, hopefully with the polar bears in this amazing tundra buggy. These all-terrain vehicles have tires that are five and a half feet tall and three and a half feet wide to ensure successful navigation over very difficult trails. In these well-heated buggies, we can comfortably and safely observe and photograph the polar bears. Well, the wind is howling, but the bear is just lying there basking in the sun. The vehicles also have large observation decks. Oh, here he is standing right here. He wants to climb up here in the tundra buggy. To learn more about these magnificent creatures, I spoke with Dr. Stephen Amstrup the senior scientist at Polar Bears International, an organization dedicated to the conservation of this species. How many people belong to PBI? Polar Bears International is almost entirely a volunteer organization, so donations largely go to either research programs or to education programs that bring the word about threats to polar bears to the general public. What are the five nations that have polar bears? The United States in Alaska, Canada, Denmark through Greenland, and Norway, and then of course Russia. And there are no polar bears in the southern hemisphere. That's right. When you see pictures of uh, drawings of polar bears and penguins together, that's not real. <laughs> that's good to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now polar bears, where do they come from? Polar bears evolved from brown bears probably between 150 and 250,000 years ago. And when a, a group of brown bears realized that there was an empty niche out on the sea ice where they could go out oh. and hunt for seals. And then they gradually turned the the whitish color that they are. If you're hunting in a white environment, right. it probably is beneficial to be the same color as the environment. The largest land predators on Earth, adult polar bears, measure 6 to 10 feet tall and can weigh up to 1,700 pounds. Their average lifespan is 15 to 18 years, and females give birth to their first litter at five or six years. Typically, two to three cubs are born at a time, but due to the lack of food available to mothers, Scientists are now observing many single births. Breeding takes place from April to mid-June. In the fall, pregnant bears enter dens to deliver their cubs in a safe and warm environment. Well, we're on the Deer River with Andrew Toma, uh, our helicopter pilot, who has been given permission to take us here to a real bear den. So this is an inactive bear den, being on the lee side here. Snow would come and basically drift over top of her. So her and her cubs would be underneath the snow. As they grow older, she would push them farther and farther into the snow until eventually she'll push them right out and they'll do their walk back to the coast. The typical mortality rate is approximately 30%. But when sea ice breaks up early, the mortality rate can increase to 50%. To learn more about the sea ice, I spoke with Dr. Andrew DeRoche from Polar Bears International. 
Why did the polar bears choose to come here for their feeding? Sea ice will form just to the north of us sooner than anywhere else in the Hudson Bay system. So all this rock that I see out here, is that covered with ice at, at, uh, during the winter? 500 miles out, you'll have solid ice and the bears will wander right out about that distance, 500 miles from here, looking for seals. The problem is we don't have any ice forming yet. Some of these bears might spend almost six months on land and that's where we start to get really concerned about right. the health of this population. Right, because they, they really need to eat. They, they live off their fat that they gain while they're eating seals. So how many seals does a healthy bear eat in the six or seven months that they're on the ice. If you're just the average bear, you're eating yeah. about one seal a week. And we hear so much, 45 years, the bears will be really on their way to extinction. You look at these wonderful animals and they're so well adapted to living in this environment. We owe it to future generations to really address this question and deal with climate change in a meaningful way. During the autumn months, Manitoba's migrating polar bears attract over 12,000 tourists to the tiny town of Churchill, outnumbering the residents more than 12 to 1. Visitors have the option of staying at hotels in town or choosing more unique accommodations in the Churchill Wildlife Management Area two hours away. There is a little complex of tundra buggies over to our left, and that is the Tundra Buggy Lodge. The lodge's five specialized modules include two sleeper cars, a lounge, and a dining unit. I'm sitting with John Gunter, who is the general manager of Frontiers North Adventures. We've got this opportunity for our guests to wake up in the morning and look out their window and literally see a bear shaking its snow blanket off, right? And they come in and get a coffee and relax. And... The bears? Well, yeah. No, not the bears. <laughs> not the bears. The guests. <laughs> it's an amazing experience to watch these animals in their natural habitat. But when hungry bears wander into town searching for food while they wait for the ice to form, they create a safety issue for the residents. The Manitoba Wildlife Conservation created the Polar Bear Alert Program to capture these wayward polar bears and release them back into the wild. Several bears have been captured uh, during the night wandering about town. And I'm with Daryl Hedman, who is the regional wildlife manager of the Manitoba Wildlife. This is an important part of the conservation of polar bears in this part of Canada. And we are going to see a polar bear that has recently been taken into captivity. Rather than being shot, this is a very good alternative. Yes, Daryl, it seems like you have a bear. Yeah. It's a big male. He's eaten whatever was hanging there. Yeah, there'll be seal meat there. When he's been processed, you can tell oh, by the ear tag. So you were recently in town, and you're back again, see? Repeat offender. Yeah, yeah, so he'll go for a timeout. The object is not to kill them. That's the idea of the program. It really took off in the early 80s. Before that, if the bear come to town, it was just shot. Now it'll go to the holding facility for the 30-day period. Why don't you just sedate him now and put him into a net and carry him off by helicopter to uh, yeah. another wild area? The reason for that is he could be back again. You know, the ice has got to come in within three weeks, so it's not bad for so him. Then you'll put him out on the ice? Then he goes out in the ice. The polar bear holding facility is located in an old military warehouse a few miles outside of Churchill. A bear is about to be taken by helicopter and re-released out into the tundra. The sedated bear was taken about 45 miles to the north. Then Dr. Stephen Amstrup and scientists from Polar Bears International inserted an ear tag so they can track the polar bear for their continued studies. Well, I've been watching this polar bear for a couple hours now here out in the tundra, waking up. So he has survived rather well out here, but this is an endangered species. Polar bears are currently listed as a threatened species under the U.S. Endangered Species Act, based principally on the expectation that in the future, the habitat would be so diminished for polar bears that they would be endangered, which is the next level of status up. How many polar bears actually exist here? A recent study found that there were about 900 polar bears here, but that was down from about 1,200 just 25 years before. So this population is known to be declining because of the reduced availability of sea ice. Well, he is becoming more and more aroused. Yeah, and he well, might be very hungry after his time in the town. Perhaps it's time to go. Okay. <laughs> after spending two days observing these beautiful animals, I needed to know what is being done to save them. Dr. Gavin Schmidt is a climatologist with NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies in New York City. 
Now, what do we learn from space exploration about climate change? They're looking at uh, how the clouds are changing. They're looking at how uh, dust patterns are changing. They're keeping track of how much sea ice there is, how the sea ice has been going down, uh, particularly in the summertime over the last 30 years. Now, what was the warmest year on record? It might be this year. Right now, uh, we're running tides uh, with 2005, which was also a very warm year. Uh, that decade has been by far the warmest decade that we've seen in the historic Record. And yet people everywhere refuse to believe that there is global warming going on. And a species like the polar bear is really in dire straits. For a species like the polar bear that is so dependent on the sea ice, a uh, big change in its extent, in its duration, uh, are going to have really major effects on that ecosystem. We're creating the problem as human beings. Right. The animals so, are not making the problem. No, the, the, the animals are just victims. We have to change, don't we? We have to think about where our energy comes from. We have to move towards renewables. And people can do really simple things uh, to weatherize their homes, to switch to energy efficient appliances and light bulbs. Well, Dr. Schmidt, it's great that you could come out and be with us and explain a lot of very, very important facts to us. Thank you very much. Thank you. My adventure in the Canadian tundra allowed me to experience firsthand how devastating climate change can be to a species like the polar bear. I will certainly try to do my part to help reverse global warming and preserve the environment that these extraordinary creatures need to survive. <laughs>